Hello guys and welcome back to the Zane Investing. I hope you had a relaxing weekend and are prepared for a wild week with AMC stock and possibly a short squeeze. This is the result of the courts. And perhaps we have ultimately obtained justice through the court system. Despite the regulatory agencies turning a blind eye. And AMC. Morgan certainly earned it. Not so. Friday after hours trading saw a 63% increase in the price of ANC shares, which reached over 100% at their peak. What does this signify? What must you know about the future of AMC and the broader markets that could influence AMC? Why the devil not? Let's immediately begin, shall we? Select the like option. Subscribe to the channel and post any comments, queries, or concerns in the section below. If you also wish to attend, you can barter with us in real time. I also believe that a number of AMC's options present a great deal of opportunity. If you don't have a trade in them right now, this could be comparable to purchasing AMC at the start of May 2021. Before anything significant occurred, you would have made thousands of percents on your transactions. So as not to disseminate too much hopium. But it's difficult not to be hopeful and optimistic given the current state of AMC data. The closing price of a single share of AMC stock, after hours on Friday, was $7.17 per share. That indicates that. The underpants were detonated. The option purchasers were destroyed. Now, AMC is unlike anything I have ever witnessed. I've never seen anything like this in any other collection, not even in June or January 2021. Yes, firms had enormous AMC short positions, but they hedged. They were covered by insurance. Hedging is insurance against the occurrence of similar incidents. This time, none of them hedged their bets. They were all caught off guard and off guard, and they have just lost approximately $1 billion, including the option transactions we have observed over the past two weeks and the actual short position. Not to mention how it is. It seems absurd to believe that none of these hedge funds or institutions could have predicted the judge's decision. Typically, Prior to a major catalyst such as this, there will be some sort of trading that leads you in a particular direction. I am referring to the days or even weeks preceding a major catalyst, such as earnings. A stock may rally ahead of earnings, for instance, and it's likely that someone is aware that earnings will be strong. So this is generally a positive omen. In contrast, if a stock declines prior to earnings and falls aggressively, it usually indicates that someone knows earnings will be poor. Well, this time around, what we've observed with AMC is that short interest skyrocketed just prior to this negative catalyst, just prior to this ultimate short squeeze. And now for the actual statistics. Consequently, short interest is currently around 29%. The final official reading we received for the brief score was 96. It has never been this high before. In January of 2021, the brief score was in the 80s, around 84 and in June of 2021, it was in the 80s. The last time you witnessed a rally that could be compared to this one, the short score was approximately 72. So you have never witnessed a low score of 96. The reason for this is because the number of days to cover is 10.22. In the past three months, this has grown by 93%. Higher days to cover implies that it will take longer for shorts and short positions to cover. This is the perspective I prefer. I am particularly interested in the fact that shorts have been increasing their positions while volume has been declining. It is therefore a straightforward calculation to divide the average volume by the total number of outstanding shares. Therefore, the number of short sold shares that remain outstanding. Approximately 145 million shares are currently outstanding. The average daily volume in AMC has been approximately 15 million, and occasionally 10 million, for a very long time. On average, you have approximately 10 days to cover short positions or to purchase the same number of shares that were sold short. That's roughly 14, right? 14.5 million for volume. On average during the last 30 days, the number will vary depending on the number of days being considered. However, this is the simplest method to view it. Therefore, an increase in volume indicates a large short position, which has not occurred in a long period. The volume rises. If it is bullish, that is typically much more bullish. Because of this, the brief score has increased to levels you did not believe were possible with AMC. Simply stated, volume has decreased recently.
cost to borrow fees, guys, hedge funds, and institutions that were shorting AMC received no respite anywhere at the time this video was recorded. 1,000% on interactive brokers, and I doubt it will get any better from here on out, because there will likely be a lot of demand to bolster AMC and cover short positions. If you consider apes, these two equations presumably own 80% of the cash flow, and there is likely 100 to 150% short interest regardless. On AMC, we've been discussing this topic for several days, roughly a week. Well, there are presumably not many shares available. There is not likely to be much of a reduction in these costs to borrow fees in the near future. Therefore, this could be an issue for the shorts who must pay these 1,000% cost borrow expenses. Not an optimal situation to be in if you're short on AMC. On top of everything else, you're being hit with costs fees. Even if this trade went through by itself, it appeared that many short positions would be unprofitable due to the fees. Currently, AMC has gained 63%. That is a major issue. Now, the cost to borrow max from Ortex is 1,050%, with a minimal cost to borrow of 971%, and an average cost to borrow of 984%. Consequently, everyone is completely ruined. Now, I find it quite amusing that you know, in the last minute of trading on Friday, hedge fund institutions purchased approximately 14 million worth of options, and in the last minute of trading, they purchased over 15 million. Moreover, if you examine these two trades, you will notice that they lost over 50% of that sum instantaneously or approximately $10 million. Not to mention the other large trades that we've been discussing every single day for the past week. Not to mention the fact that a week or two ago, individuals purchased these trades for August 18th, which has been a very significant option expiration. In the past week, 287 institutional orders from hedge funds totaling $170 million had a positive order value of 1%. This is undesirable. Now, I will explain why I believe hedge fund institutions have not hedged. Consider the put-to-call ratio. This would indicate that hedge funds are less protected against an upward move than they have ever been in AMC. In January and June, hedge funds were more protected than they are now. Therefore, I believe it is essential to observe whether or not you adopt a favorable position. Given that it will require so many options to do so, it is unlikely that you will observe hedge funds and other institutions purchasing call options to safeguard themselves against potential losses. While we're discussing this topic, let's perform some elementary mathematics. 145 million shares of common stock are sold short. Divide by 100 because each option grants control over 100 shares. Therefore, approximately 1.5 million options would need to be posted to protect all outstanding short positions. And if you take a look at some of these trades, such as this $8 million transaction, you will notice that one minute remains. Importantly, enjoy the remainder of your day, and I will see you in the next message.